All right, 7.5 was all about the operations that you can do on a matrix, right? So we talked about adding, subtracting, multiplying by a scalar, and then also multiplying two matrices together. Sometimes it can't be done. So if I'm adding and subtracting, when would I say it couldn't be done? If they don't have the exact same dimensions. So for adding, subtracting, have to have the exact same dimensions. And then for multiplying, what has to be true? Good. So when I find the, the dimensions of the first and the second matrix, the, and I write them out, the inner two numbers have to match. So the columns from the first have to match the rows from the second. And then the results, the outer two of them. Okay. So if I look at one and two, these are both scalars. You can do that to anything. So for one, I would just multiply the two in to everything that's in A, which would be negative 6, 10, 14, and 8. And for 2, I would multiply negative 3 into everything that's on B. So it would be 9, negative 18, negative 6, and 3. Everybody okay on those? And then when you get to 3 and 4, this is where you have to end 5 too. You have to check to make sure if it can be done. These are both 2 by 2s, which means that they can be done. And you just add the corresponding cells. So negative 3 plus negative 3 is a negative 6. 5 plus 6 is 11, 7 plus 2 is 9, and 4 plus negative 1 is 3. Number 4, 2a minus 3a. So I already have 2a, and that is an a. It's meant to be an a. You can add a matrix to itself, okay? So I would figure out what 3a is and then subtract it from what I got for 2a. So this would be negative 9, 15, 21, and 12. And then subtract. Negative 6 minus a negative 9 becomes a positive 3. 10 minus 15 is negative 5. 14 minus 21 is negative 7. And 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Good on that one. And then we come to the multiplication. So A times B, I have to go and check to make sure that a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2, the inner two numbers match up, and they do. And the result is the outer two, which means that this is a two by two matrix. So in that first cell, which is row one, column one, I'm multiplying those two together. Row one, column one. So negative three times three, which is negative three times negative three, sorry, which is nine. And five times two, which is 10. And that cell is 19. And then I go row one, column two, negative three times six, negative 18. 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5, and that's negative 23. Row 2, column 1, 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. 4 times 2, which is 8, negative 13. And then the last one, row 2, column 2, 7 times 6, which is 42. And 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And I get 38. So the resultant matrix would be 19 negative 23, negative 13, and 38. And on Friday, we went over how to do that in the calculator too. Type in your both matrices and then just literally multiply A times B. Is A times B the same as B times A? No. No, remember that the order on matrices multiplication is not commutative, you can't switch those. Those could give you two different answers. Questions? on any other warm-up. <laughs> Seven, six is the inverse of a square matrix. So this is the first time you see the word square matrix, I think. A square means the same rows and columns. So a two by two, a three by three, a four by four, those would be a square matrix. Think about it, a square, right? It has the same width, same length. So you, what we're going to do can only be done on, well, it can be done other ways, but we're gonna focus on them on the square matrices. So we're either gonna do a two by two or a three by three. The inverse of a matrix, so if we call the matrix A, if it is at n by n, which would mean the same rows, same columns, that's your square matrix, then there exists another n by n matrix that is A to the negative 1, so the notation is to the negative 1, and what that means is the inverse. So this is the notation for the inverse of matrix A. And if you're looking at a a matrix and its inverse, then you can check to make sure they are that because if I take the matrix and its inverse and multiply them together, it results in this pattern. 
And then if I switch the order and multiply them together, it still results in that pattern. So before when we were talking about the warm up, A times B is not always the same as B times A, except if they are inverses. If A and B are inverses, then A times B should be 1001 and B times A should be 1001. <laughs> If it's a three by three matrix, then your result should be one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one. Those patterns look familiar? Yes. Yeah, those are the what? Gosh Jordan. That's what we use for Gosh Jordan, right? Those would be reduced row echelon minus the constant column, okay? So there's kind of three different kinds of questions in this part. The first will say show that A is the inverse to B or B is the inverse to A. And in order to do that, you have to multiply both A times B and then B times A and show that the result would be 1001. So if it says the words show that A or prove that A is the inverse to B or B is the inverse to A, you're doing two matrices multiplication, A times B and B times A. And in both cases, you should get the same result. The second type of problem would be is A and B, or is B the, the inverse to A? And so you'd be doing the same process, but maybe you don't get 1001 this time, and that would be a no. So this one says show that B is the inverse of A. It's already telling you it is the inverse. Your work is your proof. So I have to multiply A times B and also B times A. So because they are square matrices, I'll know that they can always, as long as they're both two by twos, or both three by threes, they will be able to be multiplied together and their result's gonna be the same. So a two by two and a two by two results in a two by two. So I do first row, first column, two times negative one, which is negative two, negative one times three, which is positive three, and that's a one. Row one, column two, two times negative one is negative two, negative one times two is positive two, which is zero. Row two, column one, negative three times negative one is three. One times negative three is negative three. That's a zero. And row two, column two, three times negative three times one, which is three. One times negative two, which is negative two. And that's a one. And we're halfway there, because now we have to do B times A. Because I am so trained to go left to right on multiplication, I tend to rewrite A to the right-hand side. You don't have to do what I'm about to do, okay? But I tend to rewrite A over here so that I can continue to work left to right because that's the way my brain does multiplication. Does that make sense? You don't have to do this, okay? Just make sure you don't switch them around. So now I'm doing B times A. I know, again, it's going to be a two by two. Row one, column one, negative two plus three, which is one. Row one, column two, one minus one, which is zero. Row two, column one, negative six plus six, which is zero. And row two, column two, three minus two, which is one. So if the directions say show that B is the inverse of A, you're proving your work by doing A times B and B times A, and the results both times should be the 1, 0, 0, 1. Again, if the question is, is B the inverse to A, you might get a yes or no answer. You would work through both patterns. If either one of them is wrong, then it's no. So if you tend to, if you're going through A times B and you don't get the 1, 0, 0, 1, you can automatically say no without even having to do B times A. Just be really careful with your work questions so far. Do I need to do another one or you're okay? We're good. Taylor says for the class we're good. I hope everybody's good with that because if you don't respond it's on you. The only difference between what we just did and this is what? Good. There's a scalar this time so I would first have to multiply one half times each of these first before I do A times B and B times A. But we're good. Yes? Okay. Now forever hold a piece. You get to do this one. Now it's a three by three and a three by three. What pattern are you looking for? That one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, okay? 
At least go through A times B, and then I'll let you off the hook because I'll show you how to check it. So go through A times B. Get the practice of your multiplication. So, so far all we've done is A times B. If the question was to show, then I would continue doing B times A, but I'm going to show you how to use your graphing calculator to check this, okay? So I multiplied every row in A times every column in B to get the 1000010001 result. So if you...
And then the next thing is actually finding the inverse. And I'm going to teach you two different ways. So the first method I'm teaching you works for any square matrix. It works for a 2 by 2 it works for a 3 by 3 okay? The last one, which is a shortcut, which you're going to like a lot better than what I'm about to do, only works for a 2 by 2 So this crazy little notation basically means that if you take a square matrix and you write it out next to what your goal would be if you multiplied them together to get that inverse, and you work the left side of it, to get it to be that pattern, then what happens on the right-hand side is your inverse. So if my matrix is one, two, three, four, let's just say, I'll show you how to do this with, actual, with an actual matrix in a minute, but let's just say that that's the matrix I'm trying to find the inverse of. Then I can rewrite that matrix, one, two, three, four, separate it out so you know what you're doing, and on the right-hand side, so that's my original matrix, on the right-hand side I wanna put what is the result I want to get if I multiply that by its, by its inverse which is your reduced row echelon format. And then I will work to get the left side of this equation in reduced row echelon, the way that we were doing with Goss Jordan. So you guys are professionals at this now. I will work through all those steps, but whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I have to do the right side of the equation. So if I, let's say I wanna put a zero here, and I would multiply negative three times row one and add it to row two, I have to multiply all of row one by negative three, and I have to add it to all of row two. So what's happening is you're changing the left side and you're changing the right side. And once you have it in that reduced row echelon form, the right hand side is now your inverse. So let's walk through an example. So I know my goal is to get this into one, zero, zero, one format. You can rewrite it, you can separate it out, you can do whatever you want to do as long as you make sure that you know that that's what your goal is. <coughs> this time it might be easier to work with zeros because there's only two, there's only four spots, right? It might be easier to work with zeros than it is to work with one, the one in the top left corner, but if you want to keep going with the pattern, you can do that too. So is there an easy way to get a zero in one of those spots? Add row two to row one. So if I just add row one and row two, I end up with negative one, zero, one, and one. And I want that zero to be here, so I'm gonna replace row one with it. So negative one, zero, one, one is row one. Negative three, one, zero, one is row two. Now what? something you could do, because I would say there's probably two equally easy mm -hmm. steps next. Good, I can multiply that row one by negative one, because eventually I want that negative one to be a positive one. So I would do negative one times R1, and I get one, zero, negative one, negative one. Row two is still negative three, one, zero, one. Now I want a zero here. What's one way I could do that? 3R1 plus R2. So I'm multiplying row 1 by 3. 3, 0, negative 3, negative 1, 3. 3, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, negative 3, negative 2. So my top row is still 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1. Bottom is now 0, 1, negative 3, negative 2. The left side is now in that reduced format. So the right side of this is the inverse. And if you check it with your calculator, go back to your matrices. This time it's a 2 by 2. Two, negative one, negative three, one. And then bring back the matrix and the negative one. And hit enter and you should get the same answer we just got. So this is A to the negative one.
question so far? All right, so this time, obviously, pretty numbers did not happen, right? But it's not wrong, okay? So this time, again, when you get the four and you're only doing the one, zero, zero, one, I think it's probably easier to do zeros before the ones, but you can choose either one. Like, I could have multiplied the first row by one-fifth. It's just you're dealing with the fractions longer. They're going to come either way, but you'll have them longer. So I multiplied the top row by negative two and the bottom by five to cancel out the zero in that first column, second row. I got 0, 19, negative 2, 5. I replaced row 2 with that. And then I wanted the 0 where the negative 2 is, so I multiplied row 1 by 19, row 2 by 2. And I canceled out that, so I got 95, 0, 15, and 10. And then I multiplied row 1 by 1 over 95, because that's the reciprocal, and row 2 by 1 over 19, that's the reciprocal. And then I got 15 over 95, which reduces to 3 19, 10 over 95, which reduces to 2 19, and then negative 2 19 and 5 19. And again, if you check this in the calculator, so if you were to type this one in your calculator and hit inverse, you end up with a bunch of decimals, like big long decimals. Remember that if you hit the little arrow, so if I had typed in what I had for A, hit the negative one, I get a uh, uh, matrices that has a ton of decimals. If you go to your math menu, there's, remember, a little button that says math, and then there's a little arrow, F-A-R-A-F-R-A-C for fraction. And it will convert those decimals into fractions, and you would have gotten the exact match to this question so far. All right, so imagine you had a three by three matrix. I'm not going to make you do this right now, but there is one in the homework because I want you to practice it, maybe in your quiz. If I had a three by three matrix, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then I would want the pattern on the right to be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And so it'd be a lot more steps than what we just went through, okay? But the same process, your goal is to get it into that format, whatever you do to the left-hand side, also doing to the right, and then what happens is the left-hand side changes into the right, and the right becomes your inverse. So it's possible to do it the three by three. And this is the only way that you could do the three by three. The shortcut I'm about to show you only works on the two by two, okay?
this is when you start to like me again. So the inverse of a two by two can also be found using this process. So you're gonna take your matrix and you're gonna find what's called the determinant of the matrix, which is super interesting because you're both put seven, seven as the determinant, but brings it in here, not giving it a name. So this, yes, yeah, stupid. This thing, this A times D minus B times C is called the determinant. So now you know how we're gonna start tomorrow, okay? That's called the determinant. The first time I taught the determinant, one of the girls told me, because I used to do this all the time, go that way. And she said, it looks like a Jesus fish. And I said, hey, if that helps you remember what order to do it, and you go right ahead and call it the Jesus fish. And then she's like, if you give it an I, you remember to subtract. So the order for the determinant is to multiply the first, the left column, the column that goes top left, bottom right, together. Obviously, it doesn't matter if I do A times D or D times A, but I have to multiply those two numbers. And then subtract from it the other diagonal, which is C times B. So if you let Jesus guide you through the determinant, you won't get it wrong. Okay, that's your determinant. And then that goes under one on the outside. So I put one over the determinant on the outside. And instead of using my initial matrix, so notice the difference between this one and this one. The A and the D switch locations and the B and the C signs change. So it seems complicated, but once you practice it like five times, it can be super easy and it's a lot faster than what we just did. Again, this only works on a two by two. So first find the determinant, D times A minus C times B. That's a single number. Then I put one over that number on the outside of the matrix and on the inside of the matrix, you switch A and D and negate B and C or change the signs on B and C. So take the inverse of the same one we just did. So we should already know the answer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the determinant, which is three times five minus two times negative two, 15 minus a negative four becomes 19. That's the determinant. That goes on the outside under one. And on the inside, I switch A and D or the left diagonal. So this is the three and this is the five. And on the right diagonal, I change the sign. So be careful because changing the signs and switching this time is the same thing. It won't always be that way. So instead of it being a negative two, I change it to a positive two. Instead of it being a negative, a positive two, I change it to a negative two. And then I distribute that 19 in. So I get three over 19, two over 19, negative two over 19, and five over 19. Safe to assume that that would be a faster method. Yeah, they don't call it a shortcut for nothing, right? How did you get to be three, two, negative You switch the A and the D, so the, the left diagonal, the one that's going top, left, bottom, right, that diagonal, you wanna switch those two numbers, okay. and then the other two numbers you wanna change the sign on. Okay. So let's say you had one, negative two, three, and four. I would do the determinant first, four times one, which is four, minus three times negative two, which is negative six, I get 10. That one over 10 goes on the outside, and then I would switch the one and the four and change the signs on the negative two and the positive three. And then I would get four over 10, two over 10, negative three over 10, and one over 10, and then as always, I would reduce two fifths, one fifth, negative three tenths, and one tenth. But a three by three, you have to do the other way. So pay attention to the directions of the homework. There's two blocks of finding the determinant. The first one says just, I mean, not the determinant, sorry. The inverse, the first block says find the inverse. That's the one you wanna do, the one, zero, zero, one. The next block says use the formula on page five, blah, 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 whatever that is. That's this shortcut. That's when you wanna switch and use this one. By the time you get to quiz, obviously a two by two, I'll let you choose, but a three by three, you'd have to use the other way around. And then I don't know if we'll get time to put the three by three on the test, because once we get into determinant for three by three, they take a little bit longer. All right, homework is open. It's not that long, it's not that bad. And honestly, the more you practice this shortcut, the more it's gonna get ingrained in your brain.